What would our relationship with money be like if we talked about it honestly? Money is super useful tool, but also super complicated to talk about. The Elephant in the Room is a series on all things money, how it works, how to grow it, how to live without worrying about it, and simple doable ways to do money right. Today on the show, we discuss our respective journeys, how we got into the world of finance, our career growth, and how we started Novo. Welcome to the Elephant in the Room podcast series. I'm your host, Ro Nyangeri, Chief Thinker, Co-Founder, and Chief Commercial Officer of Ndovu. I am joined this morning by my co-host. Hi, everyone. My name is Radhika Bachu. I'm the CEO and Co-Founder of Dovu. People like to call me the Super Striker. Because you score goals? I do. Oh, fantastic. In this particular session, Radhika, we're just going to chat about our career journeys, what got us here from Dovu. You know, we've been doing this for two years now, but I think this is a session where we, we open up, I dissect you, dissect me, and, and we chat about how we got here. Yeah. Let's do it. So as a lady, I think I'll toss it to you. Like, I don't know. How did you get into this thing? How did you get into this? So I think if you're a startup founder, you have to be raging mad. Mm -hmm. Every day is a roller coaster. You know, we go through probably, what, six, seven emotions a day. There's some super highs, super lows, you know, but we keep plugging through and that's the main thing. Motivation, grit, resistance, persistence is like the key to when it comes to becoming a startup founder. But my journey really started um, when I was in university. Okay. So before going to university, I was... You know, when growing up at a, from a young age, I was surrounded by women who ran businesses. All right. Today, where we are today is because my grandma started a business in the 1970s. That would be unheard of, especially Whoa. for an Indian woman who's just come to Kenya. She set up the business, and that's why my father is still successful and, and running it himself. So seeing her, first of all, was you know, mind-blowing, especially now looking back, and we now know the struggles of a woman in the 1960s to run a business. And then my mom had her own business. I mean, it wasn't the bread earner, but she yeah. was making her own money. She was, you know, running a team. Um, and that was super exciting. And then I went to university thinking, what do I want to do with my life? Um, being in a Kenyan and Indian as well, parents always force you to do dentistry or medicine. I applied for dentistry, got into one of the best universities. Okay. And was like, uh, let me go do some work experience. So I've replied, I've said to the, the guys, yeah, I've done my work experience, but I'm doing a few more in the summer. And they're like, oh, that's really great, got in. Um, and I went for my first session and I thought, oh my God, I cannot do this. And at that time, obviously as a kid, you want to please your parents and you know, you've heard from your family and yeah, friends that yeah. you have to do dentistry, you do need to do something in medicine. So I remember picking up the phone and crying. My dad's like, what's wrong? Is everything okay? At this time I was in London. Uh -huh. Um, and he's like, what's wrong? I said, dad, um, you know, I don't want to do dentistry. And he's like, okay, but why are you crying? I said, yeah. because you want me to do dentistry. Like that's, and he said, no, I don't want, I didn't have that want. Yes, I suggested it, mm -hmm. but what do you want to do? I was like, honestly, I have no clue. And at that time, like everybody else, they want you to pick a career when you're at the age of 16 and you have no idea. You're young. You're yeah. young. Yeah. So I was like, okay, uh, I think I'm good at maths. And he's like, that's true, you're very good at maths. He's like, why don't you do maths at university? Great, so I spoke to a few people and said, right, that's what I'm gonna do. So I called the university that I really wanted to go in, where I had a place, and I said, please, can you take me for mathematics? And they said, listen, unfortunately, we're full for the year. If there's any dropouts, we'll let you know but we can definitely enroll you for the next year. So I said, that's fine. I was like, oh no, all my friends are going to university and I'm not. Yeah. But that was an opportunity because I then said, okay, so I have about a year off. What can I do with my time? So I decided to do internships. So I emailed a few people, was like, hi, I would love to do an internship. Um, and yeah, got onto one of uh, HSBC's summer internship, which was yeah. great. Learned loads about it, but definitely knew that's not the department I want to work in. Which department were you in? It was retail banking. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. It, was, it was like very much being day to day facing customers. And at that stage, when you're a bit young, you don't have the confidence. So you're a little bit like, mm, this is not what I want to do. But it's something in finance. Okay. So then went on to university, graduated um, in mathematics and was like, okay, this is great. I have a mathematics degree, but 
like me, I'm a planner in life. I love to plan. So I decided to, the year before I graduated, started applying for roles. I uh, spoke to a few people and everyone was applying for audit. Audit is like a huge thing in London. Everyone wants to, it's an easy way to a big four. Yeah. I was like, I'm not doing audit. I'd be bored. I was like, no way. So, Apologies to all the auditors listening in today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, you know what? If you actually ask an auditor, I've only probably met one out of 10 people who say they love audit. So the reality is it's, it's quite monotonous. And apologies for those who do audit. Um, but yeah, so I went to, I, I got into the graduate scheme for Deloitte uh, as an investment consultant. And keeping in mind in the back of my head, I was like, I will always run a business. But I knew that going, I can't start a business if I don't have any knowledge or domain expertise yeah. about anything. Uh -huh. So I was like, how do I use whatever I'm learning now to really learn and see how I can turn that into a business? So I spent four years in Deloitte as an investment consultant, advising people on how to take the money they have today. Not people actually, corporations and organizations. So they have large pension schemes. Uh, they promise to pay out pensions for their employees when they come to retire. And so I was working on the back end, doing a lot of modeling on Excel spreadsheet. No, not the kind of modeling you're thinking, real. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, we have a Naomi Campbell in here. Yeah, 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 I wish. No, I'm yeah. too short, too fat, not gonna work. No, I don't have the sharp chisel features. Uh, but yeah, so did a lot of asset liability modeling. Um, and very quickly after four years, you know, I was in rooms with super senior people, understood that actually my skill set is better suited with people, okay. then moved over to BlackRock, which is the world's largest asset manager. And whilst I was there, I don't think I fully appreciated the value that that company was giving me. And I guess sometimes they always say, take a step back and yeah. then you'll realize what life is actually teaching you. So yeah, so did four and a half, five years. Um, but the company is massive though. It's like super massive. It's huge, yeah. yeah. So right now it's the largest asset manager. What that means is that they manage uh, over, I think the number is $6 trillion of people's hard earned money and they invest it and they make it grow. So the exposure I got there was vast. I, I was in the room with the most brilliant minds. We had access to large amounts of data yeah. and using that data, really speaking to clients to understand what can we solve? What problem are we solving for you? And how do we bring... Uh, the skill set and the machine of BlackRock to you. Okay. And BlackRock, one thing was super interesting about was everything was done from a risk governance perspective. So whatever decision you make, you say, okay, what? how can we reduce the risk of making this decision? Okay. Yeah. And what does that mean for someone's money? Will it make sure it protects their money? So everything was driven around uh, capital protection. And then Ro, yeah. 2019 comes around and my husband's like, right, we got to move back to Kenya. I said, wonderful, what am I going to do in Kenya? Was your husband in BlackRock or where? No, yeah. he. we met him just uh, through friends, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. but he's Kenyan and I was Kenyan. I never thought I'd marry a Kenyan, but I did. And I'm quite happy, actually. Go Kenya. Yeah. Go Kenya. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, you know, decided to come back to 2019. And again, I always knew I wanted to start a business and I, hadn't, I didn't have a family at that time. So I went around speaking to CEOs of companies, speaking to people in different types of things like skincare. I spoke to a chocolatier. I spoke to somebody who was in fashion. I just really wanted to start something, but the I world didn't was know. Your oyster, yeah. The world was my oyster. Yeah. And then I had a conversation with one of the CEOs at the largest bank, and I realized because of the exposure I've had, there was such a big gap in the market for retail investors. And then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm relatively lazy. So I'm like, I want to start a business, but how do I, how do I go about starting a business? Yeah. I don't know how to start a business. And then I was like, what is the quickest way to learn how to start a business? So I was like, shoot, I went online, I Googled it. And then I realized I don't want to do an MBA, which is two and a half years. It's also really expensive. So I was like, what, what's the quickest way? I joined an accelerator program, which taught me everything you would learn in an MBA, but in six weeks, okay. and you were actually applying it from day three. Crash course. Crash course. Yeah. It was intense, but that was the best thing I did because that's where I met my co-founder, Ro. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then we were like, what do we solve? What do we build? And I had an idea, Ro had an idea. We both had the right skill set. The rest was history. Wow, that was a journey. It you was. could have been a dentist and then... Boring. <laughs> 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 some, some stuff you could work on uh, right here. I mean, on my side, my, my journey is, uh, let me say, strange and and eventful. So for all of you who are going to continue listening to this podcast, <laughs> Ro is really weird, but weird and wonderful. Like he's got <laughs> the worst. Nice yeah, you have like the most interesting stories and journeys and paths that life have taken you on. Thank you very much. Thank you. You see, with, with what you're chatting about today, which is uh, how we got into this game, this, this entire shindig of finance. 
I, I think I fell in love with, with finance when I was a baby. I think I was eight or nine years old. There was, there was a series called Capital City. Anyone out there, if you know Capital City, used to run on ITV, please send me a copy. <laughs> so Capital City was big. It's right? probably a really long time ago, guys. <laughs> it was in color. It was not in black and white, guys. Uh, it's not Charlie Chaplin days, but it was an amazing series. I saw it as a kid. But what I liked about it, I'm like nine years old. My late father was a journalist, right? So whenever I used to hang out with him, we would discuss stuff like uh, there's a problem in Lebanon, yeah. uh, there's uh, Iraq, uh, Iran-Iraq war. A lot of stuff was happening. So geopolitics and certain decisions. You know. Ro, this explains your need for historical information. <laughs> it, it makes all a lot of sense now. I didn't there's realize. There's a background to everything. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So chilling there with my dad, I'm like, wow. This, this is a very interesting series. They're, they're traders, they're doing stuff. But before they execute a trade, they always do analysis. You know, yeah. they're like, oh, this president has taken power. Oh, that particular law has been changed. I'm like, okay, there are all these intricacies yeah. before you actually place that trade. So from my young age, I knew I'm going to go this way. I didn't know it was called finance, yeah. but I knew I was going to play around with money and do stuff. Can I say something? Yeah. So when I was young and somebody had asked me, what do you want to be? And I always saw myself running a company, but okay. I didn't know what it was. Like I just knew there's a company. There's a company. And yeah. I don't know what it did, uh -huh. but I was in charge. <laughs> so <laughs> weird. <laughs> so it's amazing. And that was at a very young age as well. You knew you're going to be a captain, a leader. Yeah. Interesting. Super interesting. For me at that age, I didn't think I want to be a leader of anything. I was just like, I just want to do some trades with this money thing. All so right? your nerd was coming out, your nerdy <laughs> side. <laughs> Let me just do analysis and stuff like that. So I move on a couple of years later. I was I got into Strathmore School. Strathmore School is the best school in it Kenya. It is. Thank you. Thank Good you. Thank us. you. So there I am in Strath. Yeah. Um, then there was something called an IPO. Right. This is the first time I came across a term called IP or initial public offer. Yeah. And it was for a company called Kenya Airways. Kenya Airways still exists. Why am I saying there was a company? Yeah. The company called, called Kenya, Kenya Airways. Airways yeah. Right. And I understood like this company is selling pieces of itself to the people, right? And I went to my dad. My dad used to travel a lot. Yeah. So I knew KQ. I knew Kenya Airways. Yeah. As a company that moves my dad away and brings him back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I reach out to him like, hey, uh, these guys are doing uh, an IPO. That says yes. And so you're like, what is an IPO? You have this big company, right, that decides to sell pieces of itself, all right? Saying, right now we, we say we are owned by Radhika. Uh, she owns 100% of this company, uh, but we want other people to come in and Partake, you know, be be part of the journey. On on the upside, uh, the upside is a success of the business. You know, you offer, you now split up radicals one hundred percent. You say I'm gonna create something called shares. When you break ownership of the company, the small pieces are called shares. So KQ then did about I think six million shares. They created like six million shares. Okay. I could be wrong, but I think it was six million shares. And they are selling this to the public, telling Kenyans, all you guys use KQ all the time become owners yeah. become owners of this of this business so that was the first investment decision i actually made 1996 wow yeah 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 yeah. that was the first investment wow. that goes through my dad well yeah so you're like dad here's all my pocket money i've been doing the chores around the house now go invest in kq yeah in this kq thing wow yes a long time ago i don't to what are they worth today you. Oh, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> what I can tell you is this. I got into KQ. I think the, the share price then uh -huh. was about 11 shillings 25 cents. Wow. Okay? When it came to market. That's still quite high for 1966. 11 1996. Oh, 1996. Yes. Okay. But that's, yeah, that's... Uh, 1966, how old am I, Rats? Come on. No. 66! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a freedom fighter. Come on. <laughs> So 96, get by the shares, 11.25. Okay. We sold the shares, all right? Now, I'm much later, I'm older, I can see what's happening. Yeah. We sold shares KQ in 2005. Well, you're much richer. 450 shillings a pop. That's in, see, long-term investing. Yes, yes. Smart. We held it 10 years. The, the upside was amazing when we sold it. Yeah. Things has changed. So we looked at, I looked at my dad, he looked at me like, this like, is an amazing tag team. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm in Strathmore this time. Okay. Um, again, great school, so we're working hard. We head to national exams, KCSC, and 
same thing happens much like you encounter on your family side i had people telling me stuff on my side you know like you you need to be a doctor you're so smart you're smart come <laughs> a doctor you know and be like yeah i'll be a neurosurgeon yes. cardiologist the stuff of kind of stuff people always say the stuff you watched on er yes damn george clooney <laughs> <laughs> messing up our lives in the 90s yeah so yeah so i say you know what i'm i'm just going to apply for this but in my heart of hearts is like Nah, yeah. this is not exactly what I want to do. I don't yeah. wanna actually want to do this. Your experience where you said you went in and you saw like, uh, uh, I don't want to be a dentist. No way, yeah. Mine was a rough experience, okay? So I got you to med school, University of Nairobi. Well done, congratulations. Day one, orientation. We're taken to the morgue. There's a morgue right there. Yeah. At the uni, Chiromo. So there are all these cadavers around. You're pulling the shit. You're like, that's the guy you're going to work on for the next one. Yeah. Like I am not going to do this. No thank you. <laughs> Never. Thank you but no thank you and we have a lot of respect for medical practitioners. We do need doctors. We have a lot of respect but you and I have I guess weak hearted when it comes to ah, blood. Not my thing at all. Not <laughs> my thing. So that was I I think that was my first I can call failure. Okay. Right in that I'd not become a doctor. I said, you know, what, I'm not I'm not going to do this. L- yeah. Let me just fail. Yeah. Uh but fail forward. I still had my passion. Remember okay. as a kid, there was this thing I could have done. So here I am, I've left. I've said, I'm not going to do medicine. People think that guy's that guy's bonkers. He lost it. Why has got loose? Uh, but at the same time, I had actually qualified as a CPA. All right? okay. I had my accounting uh, badges, I think, at 20. Wow. Yeah. So I have something back here. Okay. So wow. So my first job was 20 and I was an accountant. That's the first thing I did. In a wealth management firm, as wow. Phil told have it, right? Yes. So the boss then takes a punt on me. This is a young kid. He's just qualified as an accountant. Let me give him a gig. Yeah. I am the back office, right? The way you, you're working on models. I, I used to do the same stuff. Yeah. But then clients would walk in and I'll talk to them about their portfolios. Yeah. Because you, know, you knew what you were doing. I know this stuff. Yeah. So the boss is like, hey, this guy's in the this guy's in the wrong position. Yeah. Let's let's move him forward. So I went to the front office, client facing. Here we are today, you know. Still chatting, yeah. still talking to clients about finance, you know. I went to uni after that. Okay. Uh, of course my, my medicine adventure was over. Uh, made some money early days. KQ partly helped in, in doing stuff. Definitely. When I did the sale. Uh, did my undergrad in banking in finance. A couple of years later, there was a global financial crisis in 08. Yeah. Fell in love with Islamic finance. Went back to school for my master's. Uh, came back to Kenya in 2012. But then I felt I need to do something that will have a bigger impact. You know, Instead of going to the run-of-the-mill institutions, um, l- let me go to an institution of national importance. So mm-hmm. I joined the exchange then. I joined the exchange on the strategy and research side. I was there for a couple of years. Uh, in 2014, I was part of the team that developed this wonderful investment product that was mobile-based. But that particular experience then, or with that product, informed me of what I was going to do next. See, all this time, I'm not an entrepreneur. I am yeah. not. I'm yeah, just that not. guy who's delivering stuff. Yeah. So the experience with this particular product showed me the need to create something that is super easy for people to use. All right, Make investing so simple yeah. and also provide education to everyone. Yeah. I could not see anyone doing it the way I wanted it to be done. It's yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to leave this. I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to create this company the yeah. way I envision it. You so know? you're trying to solve a problem for yourself, you'd say? Yes, yes. Yeah. Which applies to 50 million other people, right? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's when I just quit work. Uh, again, people are like, this guy's crazy. You know? <laughs> why, why is I told you to run a startup. You have to be crazy. <laughs> So I'm out there thinking, what do I do next? What do I do next? Uh, then the same thing that you did, just Google, find out, how do I find out how to run a business? Yeah. You know? uh, I guess we clicked on the same link, Yeah. ended yeah. up in the same place, and we hit it off on day one. Yeah. And here we are. And interestingly enough, um, so you do this thing where it's called like you, you meet a lot of people and it's like founder speed dating. And the team that we have actually used to build the product today is the first team we actually speed dated on. And we went and we did a lot of other things, but we still came back to the end team. And it, it was just like it was fate. We were meant we to We met, but you decided to date other people. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Sorry about that. You know, I like still to see what's out feelings, there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like building on the fact that actually, bro, um, yeah. when I came back, what 
so first of all, before I went into the startup journey, wanting to own my own business, I'd already had these thoughts. So when, whilst I was at corporate, I actually knew I have a salary that is sustainable. It comes in every month. It's guaranteed. Yeah. So how do I make sure that when I enter into the journey of trying to figure out what I want to do, I've got money. Yeah. And so actually, you know, obviously I worked at an asset manager, so you have a lot of red tape. You can't do individual, you can't buy companies individually because it's known as insider trading. The point I'm, I'm making here simply is that before I ventured into the journey of startup founder, and I know a lot of us listening to this podcast will probably want to do that. I made sure I got my finances in order and I went and I started investing at the age of 23 okay. in these in well these funds. Done. Yes. yes. Thank you, thank you. I, th I still think today it's actually quite late. I wish I started at 20, because I would have been a much richer woman. But, yeah. um, you know, nevertheless, I got started early, uh, 23. And now with that, when you're taking this risk of, you know, giving up a full-time paid job, I know should something go wrong, which it won't, because you and I work really hard. Yeah we have something to fall back on as a family. We actually have some money, uh, you know, it's gonna sustain me. Um, and that's really the first step I would always recommend. Like if any of you are looking to come into entrepreneurship, save for a little bit, whether it takes six months to a year, save that money, invest it, because saving is not enough. Yeah. Uh, and we'll touch upon that in, in other episodes. But you know, the importance is get financially secure in some shape or form. And the entrepreneurship journey has been a whirlwind. Of so course, Ro, tell yeah. me, <laughs> what have been, uh, the most favorite favorite moments whilst working at Dovu versus the most challenging things that you've had to do. Well, uh, <laughs> I'll flip I'll flip it around and start with the challenges, right? Yeah, we we are regulated business, you know. So putting everything in order, <laughs> ticking all the boxes. Ay, ay, ay. So um, I don't think I could have started this company without Ro. Ro loves regulation, whereas I. <laughs> I do love it. I, th I see the importance of it. I think it's great. But actually doing the work, I'd get lost. I'd be like, I can't do this. But Ro, thank God I have you on the team. It is a ton. I think, I think my neighbors now suspect I'm a vampire or I run a sect because <laughs> I am always active at night, you know, super active, 4 a.m. So I always You're going to tease me, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always call Ro my Batman because I'll go to bed and I'll say, Ro, we need to work on this, this and this. And then I just go to bed, you know, having dreams, la la land. I wake up in the morning, it's done. And I'm just like, thank God. So we work anti-clockwise. And then in the morning, he'll say, you need to do this, this, this. And then I work it through the day. And then by nighttime, we're good to go. Yes, 24-7 business. Exactly. We never shut. We you don't. Know? Yeah, we're always there. So just putting everything together, um, all the regs. And I mean, we are in Kenya now. We're expanding as well. So, so understanding all this, you know. Um, I was in Tanzania recently as part of the, our expansion and I had a meeting with some folks there. I'm not brilliant in Swahili, you know? I am not. You don't give me that look. I'm what? not. My Swahili is terrible. No. Terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. Well, you don't want to hear mine then. <laughs> so there I am, Tanzania, I'm chatting you guys. Yeah. They want to hold a meeting in Swahili. Wow. So I'm trying to translate everything I know financial services in English into Swahili. I was going to say, how that do you, what's the, slog. so share is Hisa. Yeah, that one you know, yes. Bond is? Where? So I'm going in there talking about Madhumuni, you know, our, our intent. It, it was super difficult. I'm just addressing an issue about the difficult side of doing this, doing it in a different language. Wow. The positives, the positives, I'm doing what I love, you know. Uh, I'll bleed, sweat and cry what I'm actually doing right now. Yeah. Uh, there's a term I could use, but it will be censored, so I can't use that one right now. Yeah. <laughs> Certain stuff happens when you're running the business on a, yeah. regular, on a regular basis, uh, but it's part of the journey, you yeah. know? And I also like that it's actually given me some time to pursue uh, my hobbies, Yeah. right? I love horse riding. I'm trying to be a polo player. Yeah. So, yeah. Much as we say that startups take all your time, you're drowning in it, what has done for me is enabled me to have time for my family. Yeah. I bond more with my mother, yeah. more with my siblings, yeah. right? I appreciate that one more. Yeah. yeah. And now if I flip it back to you, yeah. what has been difficult, what's so interesting? So I'll start with interesting. Yeah. Um, so when I moved back and I was having these conversations and I was asking, you know, my friends, how do you guys invest? And they're like, no, we don't invest. We have our money in a bank account and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you know how bad that is? And they're like, no, explain it. And I was like, so you go to work, you work super hard for your money. Every month you get a paycheck. Yep. 
And then you go and put that paycheck in the bank thinking that you're earning money on top of it. But the reality is that there is this thing called inflation. And inflation simply means that the thousand bob I have today will buy me five Diet Cokes today, but tomorrow it's going to buy you four Diet Cokes. And the money that you're earning in the bank account yeah. is giving you maybe two to three to four percent max. Before tax. Before tax. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good one. Before tax. Yeah. And inflation on average in African countries has been 5%. And actually recently the Kenya data yeah. team announced that it's 7%. 7 now, yes. So can you believe that that same 1,000 shillings have, has now become 993 shillings because of inflation yeah. and you're not doing anything with it. And I was like, so tell me, why aren't you investing? Like you are smart, educated individuals. Right. What is it? Yeah. And so to be honest, the current process is really complicated. I was like, explain it to me. They're like, you know, I have to go to the fund manager. Um, I have to open an account via paper. I have to speak to someone. I need to understand everything. And it's really complex. Yeah. So touch photos in triplicate. Exactly. Yes. And then it's like, well, yeah. then the challenge is I don't even know where to start. Like at school, not just in Kenya, but around the world, financial literacy, they teach you how to dissect a frog. <laughs> Yeah, and stuff like grasshopper. Exactly. And then there and then you get a you graduate and you're like, I don't know how to budget. I don't know how to save. Yeah. I don't know how to write a will. I don't know how to write anything. The real skills and knowledge you need for the real world. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, so I don't know where to get started. I was like, okay, interesting. And they said lastly, the options available aren't very exciting to me. I said, okay. tell me more. They're like, so in Kenya today, if I was an everyday investor and I wanted to invest five thousand shillings, I can only do it in the local market. I can't invest in um Microsoft and I use a Microsoft the tech laptop. Sector that you love. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. You can yeah. tell I'm a tech. Yes. Tech <laughs> tech lover. Um, so yeah, so I was like, okay, that's super interesting. So the fact that I could work and team up with you, get regulated, build the entire tech platform in house. Yeah. To obviously the users, it feels like an app, right? It's super easy. But in the back end, it's like a big machine that you're building that needs to have leverage, you know, procedures from BlackRock, things that I'd seen that worked really well. Yeah. How do we keep our customers' money safe at all times? Correct, yeah. Being able to see my friends, the same s s set of six people Those that we're receiving. having banter with, Yeah. I said to them, okay, can you now start investing? And they love it. They're like, been the first adopters. And seeing that come to life has been probably one of the most rewarding things yeah. because I know I'm changing lives. And the reason I say I'm changing lives is because I just had a baby boy and I, I wish my parents did this for me. I mm -hmm. put away, obviously, you know, babies are born first, people give you money and they give you presents. I said yeah. to everyone, don't buy any clothes, don't buy anything, just give me money. And it doesn't have to be a lot, even <laughs> if it's- Just give me money. No, because, <laughs> yeah. and I explained to them, I said, because yeah. I'm gonna invest it in a global index, cause he's zero, right? Technically he's at the age of zero. So I think it was about like a good number. I've okay. invested it. When he turns 18, he's gonna be a millionaire. And oh, I've wow. done nothing. And I'm not putting any more money in. Of course, I will top up every time it's his birthday, somebody gives him money. Yeah. I'm not buying him toys. Honestly, in the house, we have lots of toys and the kids go and play with the plastic dabba. Dabba in, in Punjabi is a, a, a plastic bowl. I think guys here know dabbas. You yeah. guys know dabbas? Maybe it's a Swahili word. You know, Indian language. When I was a kid, I used to have a dabba. Yeah, yeah, yeah dabba. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My supplies. Yeah, your yeah. supplies, your lunch, your <laughs> yeah. break, your break. Yeah. Break was very important. <laughs> and literally, there's be all these toys and they just play with those two things. So my point being is less is more when it comes to spending. Um, you know, unless it's gonna dramatically change your life, do you really need it? Instead, why don't you invest the money? Because in the future, yeah. you know, I wish my dad did this for me and I would be able to set up my business on my own and not really worry about the bills and the things I have to pay because I would have some money kept away. Yeah. So, you know, being able to give every single parent that opportunity to say, okay, I'm gonna put away 5,000 shillings today. The idea is get started, build a future, let it, let it grow. There'll be yeah. ups and downs and sometimes your money will come down, go up. But the idea is that with the stock market where you do an IPO, like uh, where companies come and sell pieces of their company, yeah. the idea is if you hold it long term, it continues to grow. Because the way we see the stock market is human progress. If people are gonna continue buying, innovating, selling, yes. you'll continuously see a growth in companies. And so just put your money in one fund and for your child and forget about it. So I think being able to bring that to real life individuals mm -hmm. and also seeing customer testimonials. All right, yes. So um, right. so we, we also have friends who've set up a company called Tulix. Uh, it's a remittance company. Shout out Tulix. Yeah, really great, smart individuals as well. Um, and their marketing lady 
Uh, I don't know if I can mention her name, so I won't. But her, the marketing lady there's was, a lady. Yes. yeah, there's a lady, a very, <laughs> yeah. very lady. She was like, Radhika, yeah. you're the founder of Dovu. I said, uh huh, yeah. And she was like, I love the product. And I said, tell me more. And you know, just uh, the excitement in her voice. She said, what you guys do is you make it easy for somebody who doesn't know about finance yeah. and doesn't want to learn too much about finance invest so you have this goal based approach whereby you say to you you take me through questions and then at the end of the questions you say okay based on your lifestyle you're a balanced investor aggressive investor conservative investor so a conservative guy does not want to take risk right mm -hmm. you want to invest your money but you want to safeguard what you call capital capital is the actual mm -hmm. initial amount that you you invested so folks like this will put money say into uh, a fixed income fund or a high yield uh, savings account, for example, right? That's the most uh, risk averse, you yes. can call it that type of and individual. What, it, what yeah. it means being conservative is that your money that you put in first is protected. Correct. Yes. And you'll earn money on top of That's that money. That's capital. So yeah. it's protected at all times. Correct. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then there's an extreme to it. Uh, the individual wants to put in cash and say, whether it goes up 100% or goes down negative 20, I'm fine with it. Yeah. I, I want to bear risk because I think there's a trade-off, right? Yeah. Greater risk, greater return. Yeah. So this is an individual called the adventurous investor. Mm -hmm. He's out there. He's he's able to stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly are an adventurous investor. Yeah, I right? am, I yeah. think I am as well. But anyways, going back to the lady story. Yes, yes. So she was like, I love the fact that once you've done the profiling, you tell me, based on your current situation, yeah. don't take too much risk, be a balanced investor. Yeah. And at the end of it, if I invested 5,000 shillings, 10,000 shillings, I will likely achieve say 12%, for example. And then I just give you my money and I walk away. It gives me time to focus on my career, my family and friends, without me having to go out and be like, what, 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 is, that? what is that share doing? Yeah, 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 and yeah. like stressing about it. So yeah. she said, for me, it makes me feel good because as a Kenyan, I know I should be investing and I'm doing it, but I'm not doing the hard work. She's like, there's another cultural thing where people make you feel and your parents that you should be doing more with investment. She's like, now I'm doing it, but I don't have to do all the hard work. And yes. she's like, so hearing those types of testimonials make my day. And of course there's challenges. <laughs> it's a business, Ro and I are fighting day and night to keep it al not, not alive. Look, we're doing really well, but we have internal targets that we're constantly fighting towards. But actually that's what keeps uh, you and I alive, you'd say, because we love working towards really high um, targets. I also do, very, you yeah. know, they say diamonds are built under pressure. Correct. Honestly, I love being under pressure. I feel like if I'm not growing and changing and I'm staying still, I'm comfortable. I just feel like I'm not achieving in life. And you know, that's one thing that's super interesting about human nature. The moment you feel comfortable in a job, just remember you're doing yourself a disfavor. The minute you feel uncomfortable, you're doing things. In fact, recently, um, with a, 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 a employee of ours, Mia, we noticed her skill set, and she was like, "Oh, I don't know anything about partnerships." I said, "But you have all the skill sets. Yes. Let's bring you on board, Can and yeah. you let's yes. do partnerships, <laughs> yes. and that will help her grow." And her being uncomfortable means she's growing. So that's a challenge. I mean, we have to keep growing. We have to make sure you know we're we're providing the right type of product to our end users. Yeah, it's a challenge that I love, though. So how is it handling Ndovu, right? Yeah. and it's all unique. Uh, yeah. set of items and characteristics and raising the young tyke. How is it? So can I be honest with you? I have always been career driven, but it's one of the most wonderful things I've ever experienced. Um, I just love the fact that there's a little human that looks a bit like me. So you've met him. He obviously looks yes. like his dad. So I actually spoke to a woman who's super successful, but also has a very uh, has a beautiful family right. and I just called and I said listen so I'm going into motherhood and entrepreneurship and you know how busy it is what advice can you give me and she said to me listen the one thing I can give you is that learn to be imbalanced meaning mm -hmm. there'll be times where you give your work everything and you feel like you're not being a good mom and you know you're not giving them enough attention that's yeah. completely normal okay but then there'll be days, for example, today, Ro, I came late because I had to take uh, Avir, he's my son, uh, to the hospital because he's, he's just, just got the cold. Um, nothing's too serious, but I was late. Yeah. And so this morning I spent, which I would have been productive and done other things, actually with him making sure oh, he's baby. okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is constant imbalance, which I'm now getting comfortable with. But initially, so it's only been five months. Initially, I was feeling overwhelmed, uh, but just making sure like, okay, what are the five things 
breaking it down essentially when yeah. you feel overwhelmed you write make your list and say okay what's a game changer and what's not a game changer exactly actually yes. this can weigh the rest is super important right let's focus on that and that's sort of how i deal with being overwhelmed as well and i think it's a really good way to look at your stuff because can yeah. i be honest some of it is just noise it's not moving the dial to true. where you want to go yeah. um and yeah so it's it's a wonderful journey um and i think yeah i'm not one of those to actually second that my husband has been such a supportive figure um he kn- it's also partly selfish from his side because yeah. he knows if i sat at home i'd be like oh so what are we doing today You're nagging. Uh, yeah so where are we going out you know i saw this incredible place yeah. i think we should go experience life let's go to in a Lesotho. Yeah. yeah let's do it so in a way no but him being yeah. there and being supportive has been probably one of the reasons why i can do this uh i've not settled down yet yes i, I was going to ask her uh, what, what what about you uh, no. tell us more <laughs> there, there are candidates uh, yes. we are, we are doing uh, an examination we're doing uh, the analysis analysis is still ongoing <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so which one is going to age and still be funny <laughs> On my side, all, all this work that we're doing, you, you mentioned stuff around prioritization. Uh, you know what's going to move the dial, what is noise, yeah. do all that. I prioritize so much. I think I know what I'm going to do on like November 19th. <laughs> no, bro, I've seen your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell me I've seen your calendar and I just think, what? I thought I was bad. I've, I've realized time is the most precious commodity uh, that one has. Yeah. Honestly, it really is. You need to manage it like really well. Yeah. So Ro, tell me, you've been mad enough to embark on this journey of startup founder. What advice would you give anyone looking to start their own business and few nuggets, just a few takeaway actionable insights? You need to be passionate about what you're doing, right? It's not just something uh it's Monday morning idea, quick back, let me just do this and and by Friday I'll be out of it. Passion, passion will take you a long way. Yeah. In in uh in building a business. Uh Number 2, you need a team. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you 100%. Can not run a business by yourself, right? Yeah. You can't. You suffer burnout, of course. Uh people don't have all the skill sets. Exactly. So you need a team. You definitely need a team and on top of that is is people that you trust. Yes. You know that this individual who's great in their own domain, they will deliver, right? Mm-hmm. You need to have deep insane tenacity yeah because as you know very well you wake up in the morning there are calf balls always yeah right yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> there's something because if you if you flick when there's a challenge entrepreneurship and building a startup is really not for you yeah you know uh you drive join <laughs> a startup lend your skills to a particular startup and learn about it and learn about it yes Agreed. this might prep you for 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 something that you you need yeah. to do and in, in future so i agree yeah. with you uh, all in all uh, only one thing to add yeah if you're working on something on your own it's worth and it's worth something but you'll probably burn out so it'll be worth zero you're better off ha- having 20% of something that's great versus 0% of, of nothing, nothing. Yeah. yeah but i'm curious When when I was making my own transition from from corporate and and getting into entrepreneurship uh there's a book I read. Mhm. Had like 32 pages. Like a really tiny book. I think I read it. You forced me to read it. Who moved my cheese? Yeah. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've actually read I'm it. The greatest advocate. I read it after my uh, after my niece had driven draw, drawn all over it. She's like, "You've never read it." I was yeah. like, "Can you give me that book?" Then I <laughs> I think that is one of the most impactful, most beautiful books ever written. I agree. Right? It's really tiny, right? Honestly, you can read it in like 30 minutes. <laughs> oh yeah. Speed yeah. read, yeah. So is there anything like in your personal side that you draw inspiration from in short we'll summarize the book um the people who succeed are the ones who fail forwards that's it no one has only any answers the per- it's just persistence and making sure not to stay put in one place so as a startup founder and if you you think you're like this is you're never satisfied with what you have today you're constantly looking to better yourself in any aspect personal work uh sports whatever it might be Um and the thing that really stuck out and and I've always been this way it's like okay I've I've conquered this and I yeah. feel like I'm in a good place with this what else can I do next like how can I learn more how can I be better 
And that's really translated in the startup. So we come across things that won't work from time to time. I would recommend reading the book, Who Moved My Cheese? It was written in quite a long time ago. Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's a really... Like doctor someone, Johnson yeah. or someone, yeah. It really like, written back in the day, but it's so accurate on human behaviors. Yeah. Um, so if you're the person who like wants to consistently look for the next thing, you could be a startup entrepreneur. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now talking about startup entrepreneurship and building a business, Ndovu design came from our own experiences. Yes. I mean, what you had from BlackRock, what I had locally from from the exchange, and and we knew we were solving needs not only for ourselves but needs that help the greater the the, the wider public. Yeah. You know? uh, what would you say is the unique selling proposition here from our product? So for me, it's personally the fact that you can leave investing to the experts. You come on board, and we say to you invest and this is how much you can earn over time if you're disciplined with your savings yeah. like we take the hard the stress and the you know the reality is kenyans are getting busier by the minute we are connected to our phones all the time we're constantly working do you really have time to now go and research about finances you don't have to you can yeah. choose an easier way give us your money and we'll manage it for you and it's done at a competitive price i'd like to say we're most competitive in the market um and that's that yeah and yeah. that's one usp like you don't need to learn anything but in the same breath if you felt like you wanted to get more involved we give out give you access to global markets but we do it in a responsible way so the ethos of dovu was like yes we want to make you money but actually say keeping your money secure at all times is one of the key things the company's built on and it comes from the fact that ro and i actually have finance experience and we've seen things go wrong and the idea is that we're not going to give you access to buying different companies individually because you as a retail investor don't have the you skill don't set, yeah. you don't have the time, and there's no additional information that you know that isn't available on the internet. So how do you, you even Ro and myself, how do we make the right call that you know a Tesla is gonna be around for five to 15 years? And the idea is that we wanna make sure Kenyans are growing their wealth responsibly. And it's not saying you're not gonna make returns because these funds do really well. They do double digit returns depending on the sector that you're in. But let's do it in a way where you're holding a basket of companies rather than one individual name so that if you ever needed to draw upon the money before you needed it, you're not seeing that significant up or the significant down. And so for me, that's like the two things USP. We're guiding you on how to invest yep. responsibly, but you're still making good returns. Holding your hand, yeah. And or if you feel you're too busy, you can't do it. You just give us your money. We hold your hand. We do it for you. Leave it to the expert. Um, and yeah. Ndovu makes you work your money. Yeah. Yes. Ndovu solution is available on Android, available on iOS, as well as a web app. So multiple channels for you to, to actually access our solution. So... No excuses. I can say that I did not find this so there. As long as we have the internet, uh, you'll be able to, to, to access uh, Andovo. Yeah. We are licensed by the Capital Markets Authority in Kenya right now. We are expanding into 12 other African countries. Uh, so people, uh, whether you're in Dakar or Maputo, will soon be coming uh, to you via the internet. Yeah. Indeed. And you can get started as little as... 5,000 baht. Exactly. So you don't need to have lots amount of money to start. You just start. <laughs> awesome. Dovu, work your money. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for listening and we hope to enjoy your company over the next 11 episodes as we tackle the elephant in the room. That is money. You could also visit www.dovu.co and watch your money work for you. You work hard for money, now let your money work hard for you.